Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today we are going to talk about how to do the 3D model on this eternity ring with the shear prong holding for the stone. Are you ready? Let's get started. Before we starting this tutorial, I wanted to understand that in between the stone, um, the gap in between the stone, it's better in between 0.1 to 0.2 millimeter. You don't want to get it too far because the stone need to reflect each other. You don't want to get way too close because it may crack the stone when you set it. All right, that's starting from the scratch. You can download this round stone at the link in the description below, sign up the newsletter, then you will get a link for this stone. So that's starting with the front view and, and I would like to have the ring size for 16 millimeter. And then you can moving up and down whatever close the stone or not. One thing you want to keep in mind that you don't want to have the point, which is the culet of the stone, getting too close to inside of a ring because if you set it a little bit lower, it may get past uh, and uh, scratch the finger. Ideally, you want to have at least 0.5 millimeter there. All right, the second thing I wanted to do is I want to create in the ring shank first. So let me go ahead to use the um, rectangle and then you have the one is called conic corners because I like this more like a comfort fit there. So I'm going to draw something look like this and moving this one by using the move command snapping into the quadrant to the quadrant right there. We can change it later after we put the stone uh, in place and overall looking to make it longer or shorter. So we want to use the command for sweep one rail. This is the rail. This is the cross section and make sure you record a history so we can change it later if we want to. All right, so now we have the stone a little bit sticking into this, uh, the part, that's okay. You can always punch the hole later. All right, the second thing is we need to creating uh, the stone all the way around. In this case, I would like to have the stone be select and we're gonna use the command for polar array and then we wanna snapping into the zero. I'm going to try 20 and see how that work. And it's actually pretty good for 20 there. The gap is not too big, it's not too small, it's not jamming each other. So I'm going to click OK there. So this will be my stone. Now that's starting working on the prong. Ideally, I'm just going to draw something really quick here uh, for the reference. First of all, if my prong is going to starting from here, I want to end it about right here. You don't need to end it like too tall. And then, so that's a reference there. So I'm gonna using the arc tool. There's an arc start end point on the arc and we wanted to snapping into the end point right here, end point right here. And I wanna give it the really graceful arc looking there and that was a reference line so we can delete it. Now, if we are looking at this arc right here, you can see it's, it's about like a re it's it's on the construction plan, right? So basically, I want to move it up a little bit because I don't want to go taper all the way to the center. And I also wanted to rotate it, so I'm going to rotate this guy and move it about this spot right here. It's roughly right in the middle. That's the ideal uh, position that I wanted to have. Let's give it a try by using the pipe command and let's pipe it for. 0.4 millimeter as a radius and let's see how it works. Ideally, you want this prong ended up right in the middle so then it can be the shear prong there. All right, if that look good to you, let's go ahead to mirror that to the other side and see if that on the side view, if see if that is the right place you want them to be. All right, so if that is the right place you want them to be, let me group this one. We're going to coming over to the front view and then let's go ahead to use the, the same command for the polar array. We had that 20 stone there, so we wanted 20 this item as well. And then you will see 
this is connected each other. Double make sure that if where it is connected is look all right. If this is connected to the bottom of the ring shank, if it is like too close, so not touching the stone. Uh, having this like a double shadow, it's not 100% uh, together, that's fine because after the setting, you will need to file this. Unless you are doing for the rendering purpose, then you will need to make sure that it is 100% matching. All right, once you have that, I'm going to group this one. All I need to do is mirror to the other side. So let's go ahead to mirror and then we'll get something like this. All right, so the eternity ring is done. One thing keep in mind, this type of a ring is so hard to size. If you want to size up and down, like half size is almost impossible because all the stone is arranged nicely. All right, so make sure that you got this uh, ring size corrected before you building your model. All right, the next things I wanted to do is having a small stone right at that triangle area. So what I like to do, picking up this stone and I'm going to move it to the side, use the gumball, hit the alt key, and then you will making a copy and then you will get something like this. All right, and also with this one, I want it to be smaller and maybe it's a little bit tapered like this, all right. Now with this one, maybe you need to move it a little bit lower, right? Uh, we need to creating the prong as well. So I'm going to create a prong about this size and using the pipe tool to creating the radius maybe 0.25 and to create our first prong here, all right? Uh, you wanted to cutting into the stone just a little bit less than 25% uh, will be ideal. And then I also want this prong to be making a copy. So that's coming into the front view. I want to have a one copy about right here. And the other one, I'm simply just going to mirror to the other side. All right. And double make sure this look good to you. And I think this stone is a bit, a little bit too big. So I'm going to move in this one down, move in this one right there. I always like to just mirror to the other side to be more symmetrical. So I'm going to pick up this one and mirror to the other side. All right, prong size is not changing just the stone size because fitting into that small hole, it might be too big. Then I would like to pick up um, all four objects and group them, right? Instead of moving like this, the angle won't be right. I would like to use the rotate tool and I'm going to snapping into the zero and I'm going to move it like this, all right? So this will helping you to get angle is more correct. I may need to move it down, but because the angle is already right, so I can just using the gumball to move it. Let's take a look on the side. All right, now we wanted to move it inside just using the gumball to drag it and see if that is the right place over there. All right, now what I'm looking at here, I think the prong is a little bit too tall, so I'm going to ungroup it and just bring in those two prong because it's tapered a little bit. Not tapered, it's tilted a little bit, so that might need to get inside a little bit more. I'm going to group it one more time and maybe to look like it's like cutting inside too much, maybe I need to move it out a little bit. And this prong need to be moving in a little bit and stick it out too much. All right, double make sure everything look okay to you. So that's also group it. Coming back to the front view, let's go ahead to using the polar array. Again, we need 20 of them. And then that will be one side. And let's just go ahead to pick up everybody and mirror to the other side. Then we'll have it done like that. Double make sure if the render look okay, all right, more stone setting information. You can check out my online course for stone setting 3D modeling course on my website. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.